Welcome to Introduction to Accounting, Preparing for a User's Perspective, Expanded Accounting Equation, Computing Changes in Ending Balances. In the prior two videos, I introduced the Balance Sheet Equation, which is assets equals liabilities plus equity. And then in the second of those two videos, I showed how that equity gets expanded into its two component pieces, the contributed equity, which is contributed capital, and the earned equity, which is retained earnings. What we'll do now, instead of just focusing on computing a missing piece of ending balances, we may give beginning, ending, and ask you to do the change or something like that. We're just stepping it up a little level to make sure that you fully understand how this all builds up so you can fully handle a large expanded accounting equation. What I like to do is I like to first put down my expanded accounting equation, and then I write down the beginning, ending, and then the change. I just set up a format into which I can put the given information and then I will solve for the unknowns. At the beginning of the year, X1 assets were 50, liabilities were 20, and contributed capital was 5. So we don't know beginning retained earnings. During the year, assets increased by 70. So they went from beginning plus the change equals the ending, and the ending is something we don't know yet. Liabilities decreased by five, so they went down by five. So we had a beginning, we had the change, now this is actually going to be a minus five, equals ending, and we don't know the ending. Retained earnings increased by 40. Now in this case, we don't know the beginning or the ending, so we'll have to use the expanded accounting equation working horizontally to solve for that. That's really all we've been given. So these others, we also don't know ending contributed capital and the change in contributed capital. Now let's read the question and see what it's actually asking for. Compute assets at the end of the year X1. Since we know the beginning to be 50, we know the change to be 70, therefore we know that the ending is 120. 50 went up by 70 to get to 120. Let's go ahead and put that number in here, 120. Compute liabilities at the end of the year X1. We know the beginning was 20. It reduced by 5 to get down to the ending of 15. Compute contributed capital at the end of the year X1. Well, we cannot work vertically in this case because there are three variables and we're missing two. You cannot solve that problem with the information given. However, we can solve horizontally for the change and then we can solve for the ending. Let's do that. As you know, these assets must be claimed either by the lenders and creditors or by the owners. 40 of retained earnings minus 5. We're down to 35. Therefore, the missing piece must be 35. Prove out your work. We have $75 in equity minus $5 in liabilities equals 70. So we're good there. But we're still trying to get this answer, we can't solve that yet without knowing the change. Now that we have the change, we can then work our way through. Take our beginning plus our change equals our ending. Beginning is 5. The change is 35 equals 40 ending contributed capital. Now we have the information to fill in. Compute contributed capital at the end of year X1, that is 40. The change was up 30. Five. Now let's go over to retained earnings. Once again, we cannot solve this vertically because we don't know the beginning or the ending. We're missing too many pieces. But we can work horizontally. These should add up to 50 because they have to claim all $50 of the assets. So what we now need to do is solve for the missing piece here. 20 plus 5 is 25 plus something equals 50. This has to be 25. So that's at the beginning. We can also then work horizontally to determine what this missing piece is. 15 plus 40, that is 55. 55 plus something equals 120. This has to be 65. 65. Once you've done that, prove out your work. It went from 25 up to 65 at the end, so it must have increased by 40. You should prove your work horizontally and prove your work vertically. Once you've gone through and verified all those numbers, you know you've got this computed correctly. 
Question two, once again, you've been given information from the expanded accounting equation beginning and ending, and you'll be asked to solve for the unknowns. At the beginning of the year, X1, as you know, I like to put up a beginning row, an ending row, and a change row. So at the beginning of the year, assets were 90, contributed capital was 10, and retained earnings was 40. The unknown for that row is liabilities. During the year, assets decreased by 20. Put a minus 20 there. So the missing piece here is ending assets. Liabilities increased by 30. The missing piece here is ending liabilities. And capital contributions increased by 70. Now it's going to ask us to compute assets at the end of the year. You know the basic formula. If you take your beginning assets and you add the change during the year, you're going to get your ending assets. 90. Now this is actually a reduction. So 90 down by 20 gets us down to 70. So our ending assets are 70. Compute beginning liabilities. Well, we don't know beginning liabilities. And we can't solve this vertically using the beginning plus change equals ending because we only have one of the three variables. We would need at least two of these variables to solve for the unknown. However, looking horizontally, we know that all 90 of these assets must be claimed by the lenders and creditors or the investors. The equity in these assets is 50. Therefore, the difference, which must have been funded by debt, is 40. Compute beginning liabilities. Compute contributed capital at the end of the year, x1. We know the beginning, b10. We know the change of 70. Therefore, the ending contributed capital must be 80. Compute retained earnings ending balance. Well, this one's a little tricky, because we know we don't know the ending, but we also don't know the change. If we wanted to solve this horizontally, we can't because we're missing an additional variable. We would need at least to know that ending, which we could solve right now, but let's say we don't know it, and we don't know the change. So what do we do? We can take the approach of solving for ending retained earnings because all of this, lenders and creditors claims, and the owner's claims must add up to a negative 20. So if you take all of this, that's 100 plus something equals negative 20. The only way for that to work out would be for this to be negative 120. So 100, and then you take away 120. It's like you're out here on a number line, here's 100, and you're trying to get to negative 20. So that swing here is a minus 120. Now that we know the change in retained earnings, we say if we take our beginning, of 40, and we have our change, which was down 120, we would get our ending. So 40 minus 120, take away 120, is negative 80. You start with 40, and you take away 120, you will get negative 80. That means they don't have positive retained earnings, they have negative retained earnings. What that means, is not only did they not have income that they retained, but rather they had losses that they retained. They had net losses, and that net losses is reducing owner's equity. Okay, so that is ending retained earnings negative 80. So that's actually not even retained earnings. We actually call that accumulated deficit is the actual name for that in a corporation. Now, how much did retained earnings change? It went down 120 probably due to net losses. Or they could have paid out a lot of dividends more than they should have. What was total equity at the end of the year X1? In order for this to work out, beginning of 40 plus the change of 30 equals the ending of 70. If you work this out horizontally, you'll see this is 150 minus 80 equals 70. Work it out horizontally, work it out vertically, and you've got this type of problem nailed down. So total equity, now be careful that you read the question carefully. What was total equity at the end of the year? Total equity is these two pieces combined. That's total equity, and total equity is actually zero. The owners have no equity in the, this business because all of the assets are fully claimed by the creditors and investors because this nets to zero. Please practice these problems, then go ace the quizzes.